Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll get to your weather and traffic in just a bit. But first, we want to continue following that breaking news out of Miami, Florida. Now, officials just gave an update moments ago. Here are the newest details as we know it. 55 units collapsed overnight at this uh, high rise condominium. We've been tracking 35 people pulled from the rubble. At least one person is confirmed dead. Crews continue their search for survivors after that multi story condominium collapsed overnight. You're about to see there is the extent of the damage. First responders say this 12 story beachfront condo partially collapsed one floor after another. They described it as quote unquote pancaking. And as you can imagine, it will take crews weeks to get through all of that rubble. ABC's Ike Jachi starts us off with the latest details. Good morning. The building partially collapsed earlier today with several people gathering outside. The search for residents continues. Breaking this morning, a building collapse in Miami, Florida. This is going to be an entire building. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 to 13 stories. The structure, a multi-story building which appears to be residential, located in the small beachside town of Surfside, about six miles north of Miami Beach. Take a look. You can see the backside of the building reduced to rubble. Witnesses gathering around the scene, recalling the chaos. The building shook. And then I looked out the window when the dust cleared, there was the back half of the building or back two thirds of the building was gone. It's down to the ground. Oh my God, there's people who were there. I mean, there's gotta be people in those that were, that were there in these units. The Miami-Dade Fire Rescue says more than 80 units were sent to the scene. Their drones surveying the area. First responders rescuing a young man from the rubble using a bucket to take people off their balconies. People inside neighboring buildings were evacuated from their respective locations and brought to a nearby recreational center. Right now, first responders are on scene searching for anyone trapped inside the rubble. The investigation into what caused this building to collapse continues. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. We will continue to follow this story and bring you more coming up on the news at noon. A couple other top stories we are following this morning. San Antonio police are combing through shell casings after a fight turns to gunfire on the city's south side. They say someone in a white Jeep pulled up and opened fire on two men under a bridge. One of them died. The other is in the hospital. Here's a look at that scene. This is the I-35 bridge at Southwest Military. By the time police got to the scene just after 11 last night, the fight was over and there were two shooting victims, one who had already died. The other victim tells police they were walking under the bridge when someone in a white Jeep SUV pulled up and started firing at them. That's when shots were fired. The name of the man who was killed has not been released yet. As far as we know, police have not found the shooter. Tough morning for a woman who crashed her car up on the city's northwest side. It happened just after 3.30 this morning, the 4600 block of Medical Drive. Police say the woman was driving home when she fell asleep, jumped the median, causing the car to roll over. Officers tell us the car then caught fire. Luckily, the woman got out safely with no major injuries. Firefighters were able to quickly put out that fire. Those stories and more are part of today's 9 at 9. Miami investigators are working to determine what caused a 12 story apartment building to partially collapse overnight. Dozens of first responders are on scene searching for survivors. Authorities are calling this a mass casualty event. San Antonio police say a man is dead. Another is hurt after a fight turned into gunfire. The shooting happened overnight in your Southwest military and I-35. Police are still looking for the shooter. This Bear County Sheriff's Department Lieutenant is out of a job after posting pictures of herself near the deadly Capitol riots. Sheriff Javier Salazar expressed his disapproval nearly five months ago. Roxanne Mathai does not face any charges. Bear County health officials are expressing concerns with the Delta variant of COVID-19, saying if vaccination rates remain stagnant, the spread of the variant could have severe consequences. A little over half of Bear County is fully vaccinated. No cases of the strain have been confirmed in the San Antonio area. Vice President Kamala Harris will make her first visit to the U.S.-Mexico border tomorrow. The vice president is headed to El Paso after months of criticism for failing to visit amid the border crisis. President Joe Biden will meet with lawmakers today to discuss his trillion dollar infrastructure plan. A bipartisan group says they've reached an agreement worth nearly $600 billion. It's less than the president anticipated, it's trillion dollars, but far more than the initial proposals from GOP senators. 
One of the largest unions in the U.S. will vote today on whether it will make organizing workers at Amazon a top priority. The union group Teamsters currently represents over a million workers. In the past, Amazon has been accused of overworking its employees and denying them adequate wages and safety measures. Hong Kong's only pro-democracy newspaper will publish its last edition today. The Apple Daily forced to shut down after five editors and executives were arrested and millions of dollars in its assets were frozen. The Apple Daily grew to an outspoken voice for defending Hong Kong's freedoms, not found on mainland China. It was the only print newspaper of its kind left in the city. Skywatchers will be in for a treat tonight when the full strawberry moon graces the night sky, but don't expect it to be strawberry red. Astronomers say it will more likely be orange or yellow. And that's today's 9 to 9. 80 degrees out at the airport. Strawberry moon, Justin? Is that is that going to be a thing? Are we going to be... I, how, is it going to be cloudy? How clear is our view going to be here in San Antonio? You may be able to see it for a little while, but uh, you're right about the clouds. We get the clouds building in in the morning. Sometimes it is hard to see that sort of stuff, but uh, you should be able to check it out overnight for at least uh, a period of time. And nighttime's a good time to be outside because that's when temperatures are actually pretty comfortable. Here's some good news. We have rain chances in the forecast as we get into next week. I'm encouraged by the pattern. It looks like we're going to get unsettled weather, some showers and storms next week. In the meantime, still hot. And today we'll be up around 95 degrees. Heat index will be 105 plus. Another day where we're borderline dangerous with those heat indices. Numbers right now in the 80s across most of Bear County. 80 degrees, Port SA, 81 Randolph, 82 Gonzales. We're in the 70s in the Hill Country, places like Kerrville and Comfort. Your forecast today again takes us up to 95. Partly cloudy skies, south southeasterly winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Guys. And checking trans guide right now. Looks like we've got a stalled vehicle. Some flashing lights there on the right hand shoulder. 410 Jackson Keller area. Any morning headlines, a footbridge collapse in Washington, D.C. right down on a highway. An Apple Watch saves two victims from a robbery and another ride at Six Flags Amusement Park has to be shut down. David Sears is here. Good morning, David. Lots to talk about this morning. As if some of these rides aren't scary enough. Right. Got to oh, deal gosh. with this. We'll have that for you in just a second, but first, you are looking at a footbridge that collapsed onto Interstate 295. This happened yesterday in Washington, D.C. We've got some still shots of the vehicles that got smashed up. Believe it or not, police tell us and EMS, along with police, say that no one was trapped. Pretty incredible when you see one vehicle actually caught under the bridge. Then there were several other vehicles that looked like they couldn't stop in time and smashed into each other and the, some part of that debris. Part of a truck carrying diesel got caught under the bridge, so a hazmat crew was called to the scene to keep an eye out for any possible leaks. Both directions of the highway were blocked. The cause of the collapse under investigation. All right, let's take it to Pittsburgh. A guy walks into a Domino's Pizza, tries to rob the place. There is an employee right there behind the counter. He's got a trainer in there working with him. So shot already. Adu says the guy held a gun to his head. He even recognized the robber. Gadu says the guy tried the same thing the day before about five miles away where he was working. The armed robber, Mayambo Maambi. He wanted the safe open, but Gadu showed him it was on a timer. He decided to wait. But while he did, he put the employees in the freezer and took their cell phones and told them he'd be back. Gadu said he locked the door from inside for protection and then realized he had another way to help himself and his fellow employee, his Apple Watch. That was on my hand, he didn't check it, so luckily I just opened, text, and uh, I just text my sister, one of my employee, and the owner. My sister called the police, my employee called the police, and they were here in a few minutes. And we now know that that Apple Watch works in the freezer. By the time the police arrived, the guy was gone. He headed for Ohio, committed two more robberies, then over to Illinois. But that's where his crime spree ended. He was arrested during a traffic stop. And finally, check this column out right here. This, this is one of those braces. Look at that thing just kind of shaking. The name of this ride is Spinsanity, and that column is shaking all over the place. It's not supposed to be. You can see riders were buckled in, ready to go, but the safety sensors stopped the ride. One witness said that column was shaking so hard the concrete was moving around. Some people standing in line didn't need to be told to leave. They started moving away right away. No one hurt. Ride being inspected. It was only a month old. That thing gets up to 70 miles an hour and goes 150 feet up 
And then, of course, back down. Look at that thing shaking. That would, that would scare most people if you're standing in line mm -hmm. going, is that <laughs> No, no, thank to you. Happen? I don't think That's so. That's not right. No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely against your attention. You can see people looking up at it. Yeah, they can see like, it, too. Uh, no. I like the people just like, nope. 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 I'm out. I'm See you good. Later. Mm -hmm. Fix it. I'll, be, I'll be back later. Not on my watch. <laughs> Thank you, David. Right. right now, 908, about 80 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Governor Greg Abbott vetoed 21 bills from this year's legislative session. They include a dog cruelty bill, legislative pay, and a criminal justice reform bill. A breakdown of what else didn't make the cut and why in just a bit. Things are opening back up, including local theaters. On your feet, the story of Emilio and Gloria Stefan is coming to the Woodlawn Theater this summer, and we have a peek backstage with the cast. Good morning. Well, we're still celebrating Fiesta, so do you have any kiddos at home that are really pumped about it? Or maybe it's your first Fiesta. Well, we can hook you up because a local author has published and illustrated this new book. We'll talk about it just ahead here on GMSA at 9. Introducing your 2021 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Grace Huey, and I'm this year's queen of the Order of the Alamo. Viva Fiesta! The Order of the Alamo is the oldest royal court in the Fiesta celebrations, and for this year's queen, it's a family affair. My dad and my brother being a part of the Order of the Alamo and a sister-in-law, and so I think that truly shapes it and just really brings it close to home. Elizabeth attended the University of Oklahoma where she earned a degree in communications. I really think that my major, I got so much out of it because at the end of the day, any kind of job field you go into, for the most part, you are dealing with people. Elizabeth is a kindergarten teacher, and just as her teacher left an impression on her, she hopes to do the same with her students. My kindergarten teacher was fabulous, and I still know her to this day, and I want to be able to just create, make an impact in these kids' lives because they are our future learners and, and leaders. When she isn't reigning as queen, Elizabeth does charity work at the Believe It Foundation and enjoys spending time with family. I like to fish, I, I like to go to the beach and go to the ranch with friends. Yes, to fun for everyone, that's the mission and title of a new children's book written and illustrated by a San Antonio teenager. The author, Nadia Gonzalez, began working on the project nearly two years ago to help make the party with a purpose more accessible for children. Alicia Barrera is live with more on that work and went into the publishing of that colorful book. What's next for the author herself? Hey, Alicia, good morning. Good morning. Well, let me tell you, this is fiesta fun for everyone. This is Yana Guana, the main character, a little piñata, and Yana Guana takes you through all the events of fiesta. So Battle of the Flowers, the Night Parade, Fiesta de los Reyes at Market Square, and of course here at Nyosa, this is where we are now. And so the author, Nadia Gonzalez, tells me that this all started after volunteering at Krista Santa Rosa's Children's Hospital. She knew the, could, the kids couldn't fiesta show. She wanted to bring the party with the cause to the hospital. Her love for San Antonio and Fiesta runs deep. But I've always had a love for Fiesta and my mom has taken me ever since I was like a little baby. And this year, she finally gets to share her spirit for the city and celebration through a project she's worked on for more than 200 hours during the span of nearly two years. So I wrote the book for my Girl Scout Gold Award. So the title of my book is Yanaguana's Fiesta Fun for Everyone. I got Yanaguana from the San Antonio River. That's what it was originally called. But before hitting the shelves online, it started as a dream and a sketch inspired by the young patients at Santa Rosa's Children's Hospital. And so I looked out and I saw that it was right across the street from Market Square. So I figured that they didn't really get to participate in Fiesta since it's not really accessible. Hola, I'm Yana Guana, but you could call me Yanni. Every day when I first started, I would re do the research on Fiesta so I could gain some knowledge on the event before starting writing. And then when COVID hit, I like went full into the project so I would draw like pictures every day for the book. The book Yanaguana Fiesta Fun for Everyone was submitted as part of Nadia's Girl Scout Gold Award which she'll proudly accept next year but she says the most gratifying part has been donating to the hospital a total of 60 books, a Fiesta Loteria game she also illustrated, and a handmade plush Yanaguana. I mean, it 
feels really great seeing my book published on Amazon and knowing that uh, the children in Santa Rosa's Children's Hospital now have a easier way to celebrate Fiesta with the rest of us. When you attend Oyster Bake, you're helping uphold the party with a purpose tradition, which gives 100% of the proceeds back to St. Mary's students. How many oysters can you eat? <laughs> All right, so this is the Loteria game that Nadia illustrated, created along with her mother. Pretty impressive. So it includes iconic things like, of course, oyster bake. So you would win if you got that one. You have the elote, you have the flower crown, and then, of course, the popular chancla. So a lot of cool icons that make San Antonio and, of course, Fiesta so special. Mark? Alicia, where can folks buy the book or the Loteria game? Very good question. So this book right here, you can buy on Amazon. It's $10, so really affordable. A lot of work and research just went into making this and of course the beautiful artwork. Now, if you want the Loteria game, which again, we showed you over here, that's gonna be part of the Fiesta kit. So you get the cards, the deck of cards, and then you get the plush Yanaguana. That one you can buy on her Instagram. It's $26 and just know that limited quantities are available. So right now on ksat.com, we have all those details listed in case parents, or again, we know our producer, he's new, Dylan. Uh, this is a good book for you so you can learn some of the history of Fiesta. Alicia, thank you. I love her illustration, <laughs> especially for that Loteria. It's beautiful. Thank you, Alicia. Well, the pandemic yeah. has been especially hard for local nonprofits and organizations that depend on big events for funding. One of them is Fiesta Youth and a group that hosts weekly meetings and events as a safe space for young kids and teens in the LGBTQ plus community. After more than a year of Zoom calls and canceled events, they've resumed in-person meetings and put on their biggest fundraising event of the year. Last weekend, they gave out more than $13,000 in scholarships to a handful of Fiesta Youth. Their newest and largest contribution is the Hector Bove Memorial Scholarship in honor of a beloved community advocate who died by suicide in July of 2020. At the request of the family, they said, you know what, since this is the first year, we had a crazy year. I think Hector would have wanted us to do a little bit more. So the family decided to give all of the scholarship winners an extra $500. There were seven total Fiesta youth awarded a $1,000 scholarship. The recipient of the Hector Bove scholarship got $2,500. Now that they've got their first big event in the books, Fiesta Youth is planning for the rest of the year to be full of fundraisers. For more on what the group has in the works, tune into the news at noon. And Justin, you know, Mike was talking about maybe in a couple of days we might have rain in the future. It's encouraging. Looking at the models this morning, it does look pretty good next week for at least some scattered downpours. And that would bring temperatures down some, which I think we're all in agreement yes, would be a yes. good thing. Uh, the drop monitor comes in on Thursday, so I want to show you that real quick. Notice all of the West is in bad shape. You know, they did get a little bit of rain yesterday, but it's still uh, a pretty bad situation as you get into New Mexico, parts of Utah, Nevada, uh, Arizona, California. There is a little bit of rain in the forecast, but I don't know that it's going to cut into that drop much. Now, here in Texas, we continue to do pretty well. Three months ago, 68% of the state was in drought. This week, it's only 13%. It's basically far west Texas. We've basically eliminated the drought here in our area. And with more rain on the way, we should be in good shape too. Here's a look at Medina Lake. It's at 34% full. Now, Medina Lake hasn't seen a big bump from uh, the rains that we saw over the spring. And the one year change is down about, down about 21 feet. But we know Medina Lake can fluctuate and uh, hopefully a little bit of rain can uh, help the lake as well as uh, we get uh, later into the summer. Here's the six to 10 day precipitation outlook. And basically this is looking forward to next week. It shows you where the above average chances are for precipitation and notice right here in Texas, we've got those chances and that's what we want to see, especially this time of year as we head into July. It's typically one of our driest months. We'll take the rain chances right now. We've got mostly cloudy skies, 81 degrees at the airport. Humidity is still way up there with south southeast Julie winds at about eight miles per hour. Temperatures in the low 80s for most of Bear County. You've got 70s up in Bernie Stage Comfort, 79 in Kerrville and 79 Uvalde, 83 in Del Rio. Cloud cover is scattered around the area with high humidity levels. Dew points are still in the mid 70s. Dew points have jumped up to 80 in Gonzales and 
They just don't want to drop much, and that means the heat index will continue to be an issue. It will feel like 103 this afternoon here in San Antonio. I'd say 103 to 105, but you'll get those even bigger numbers out near Gonzales where that humidity is just so high. 107, 106 Pleasanton. And this is borderline heat advisory levels, so be careful if you're going to be outside. There you see the cloud cover. Uh, partly cloudy. These clouds will break up a little bit more as we get into the afternoon. That tends to be the trend. And I mentioned some of the rain out west. You see some of the showers there, some storms across uh, the Midwest and parts of Missouri. High pressure over us right now, but this changes. High pressure moves east, and then we get another ridge of high pressure that builds out west. And right smack in the middle is where we get a lot of unsettled weather, and that includes us, us, us here in Texas. And by Monday, we're looking at some scattered downpours. That'll be the case Tuesday, probably Wednesday, Thursday as well. So again, encouraging to see that. And here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 96 tomorrow, 95 Saturday. We'll add in some rain chances late Sunday, mainly along the coast. And then isolated stuff Monday, more scattered Tuesday and Wednesday. And temperatures come down as well, guys. Welcome, temperatures coming down. Thanks, Justin. 922, about 81 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, we take you backstage for a performance that has been on hold for over a year. Details on when and where the production kicks off. Welcome back. This Friday, the Woodlawn Theater will welcome back audiences more than a year after the scheduled premiere of On Your Feet, the story of Amelia and Gloria Estefan. KSAT producer Priscilla Cataman got a sneak peek behind the scenes of this new production and gives us a look at how much this opening night means to the cast and the crew. It's the story of the iconic duo Emilio and Gloria Estefan, and it's coming to the Woodlawn Theater this summer. On Your Feet is sure to do just that, get you out of your seat and on your feet. It's really exciting. It's super high energy. It's a lot of fun. I think a lot of people don't realize um, what a catalyst Emilio was for um, Gloria and her success. She's actually very shy, and so he was kind of the one that you know, kind of pushed her and said, you can do this, and he believed in her, and I think he was a big part of, um, of her success because she believed him um, and he believed in her. We asked the cast what it means to them to be back on stage after last year's premiere was shut down because of the pandemic. I am so happy that live theater exists because I feel like something we all lacked this the past year is human connection. And with live theater, that's like the ultimate human connection of telling stories and then making others feel emotion from the stories that we tell. And um, it's been so powerful to be here and see all the familiar faces and be able to do all of this all over again. I'm so grateful. Last year at this time, you know, we got a phone call on Monday morning and they said, we can't go back to the theater anymore. So for us to be able to be here now is awesome. We're super excited to have everybody here. On Your Feet runs at the Woodlawn Theater June 25th through July 18th. For more information, head to KSAT.com. Priscilla Karaman, KSAT 12 News. And the show will go on. I love that. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. We check in with RJ Marquez, who's at the Alamo for an event happening today. RJ, what do you have coming up? Yeah, guys, we are out here at Navy Day at the Alamo. It is an official Fiesta event. We'll tell you about all the fun stuff that they're going to have out here. And we're going to tell you about some of these bullets and this bell right here. Not live bullets, y'all, but still some pretty cool demonstrations headed this way. And it's going to be free, open to the public. We'll give you a little bit more information right after the break. Welcome back. It's 931. Over 5,000 active reserve and student Navy sailors call San Antonio home. And today, a Fiesta event downtown will honor all of them. Sailors will be in front of the Alamo later today for Navy Day. RJ Marquez live there now with a preview of events and details on what it's all about. Hey, RJ. 
Yeah, good morning, guys. Coming to you live from the Alamo. And guys, we talk a lot about Fiesta events, of course, NIOSA, the River Parade, Fiesta, Fiesta, all the big Fiesta events. But this event out here at the Alamo, pretty important too, especially when it comes to San Antonio. We are military city, USA. So this is Navy Day right here at the Alamo. And we're going to be talking about all the special things that are going to be taking place. This starts at 11 o'clock. So if you're still maybe thinking about having some plans, thinking about what to do, this might be the spot to come check out, to check out all things when it comes to Navy, sailors, and the skills. And just to talk about that, we're going to bring in Lieutenant Michael Wydella. Lieutenant Michael Wydella, he is with the U.S. Navy. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that you guys have set up today for guests or anyone here that's going to stop by the Alamo. Yes, sir. So today's a great day at the Alamo. Uh, we're going to have 20 men and women from South and Central Texas. Uh, they'll be swearing into the Navy today. And then following that, we're going to be having a, a demonstration uh, for the Master at Arms A School. We'll have color detail, uh, also a, a funeral honors. Uh, also today, there's going to be presentation of three scholarships for, for local students from South Central Texas that are getting their college paid for by the world's greatest Navy. And that's totaling over half a million dollars. Awesome. That is great stuff. So let's talk a little bit about that demonstration because I saw you guys setting up earlier here. So we have some wooden bullets here. And so what's sort of the symbolism? We also have a bell back there. So what's a little bit of the symbolism behind uh, some of the ceremonial stuff that you guys are going to be doing out here? Yes, sir. So, so every quarter deck you'll come across in the Navy is going to have these ceremonial bullets present. And these, these bullets are replicas of the five-inch deck guns on board most surface ships that we have out uh, out for deployed. Uh, also, so the bell, the purpose of the bell is uh, it's, it's a replica of the ship's bell, and that's to bong on uh, the most senior person coming aboard. Uh, Commander Gambus will be joining us today, and he'll be receiving his four bells. There'll be a, a ceremonial uh, honors through the red carpet treatment, and then uh, that'll initiate our ceremonies today. All right, some great stuff there. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Wydella, and thank you very much for your service to yes, our country. Really appreciate it. Uh, some other stuff they're going to have out here, guys. They're going to have a tent with more information about the U.S. Navy, and check this out. They're going to have some swag, and also, hey, you can't have Fiesta without Fiesta Metal. So we got an official U.S. Navy medal right here, guys. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Again, this is free and open to the public. It starts at 11 o'clock. Lasts a couple of hours, so so if you just want to come check out another interesting Fiesta event, this is the place to be, the Alamo right here this morning. Back Love to you guys, metal. Mark and Stefan. Mark and Sarah, sorry about that. That's okay, That's RJ. Okay. Thank you, RJ. Uh, live down there at Alamo Plaza. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're welcome. That's going to be uh, a collector's item, kind of a different, unique medal like for that. us. I like that little sailor metal there. Mm -hmm. Also, I really don't like this weather, Justin. 81 degrees. Uh, yeah. yeah, you saw RJ there. He was already sweating. That. I mean, uh -huh. the, the heat, the humidity, that really has been the problem as of late. And that doesn't change today. We're still going to get those heat indices up around 100, maybe even 105 in some cases. So just beware. If you're going to be outside. I want to start with the picture. This seems a little more relaxing than talking about the heat. Uh, beautiful shot here. Uh, coming in from San Marcos, and you see the sun's sort of on the horizon there, some clouds on the horizon. Always makes for some nice colors, kind of some cool shapes there in the distance. Beautiful. We appreciate it as always. And uh, looking at the uh, satellite and radar here, there is not a front across Texas. That shouldn't be on there, but we do notice some showers. I wish there were uh, some showers there along the coast and some clouds here around San Antonio. The heat is going to be on today. Temperatures will be up into the 90s in a lot of spots, and there's enough humidity even out in the West Texas, where we're getting some heat index values, but uh, here in town, we're thinking close to 103, 104, again, maybe 105. It gets even worse as you get closer to the coast, places like uh, Corpus Christi. And then you look at Laredo, they could have heat index as high as 110. No heat advisory is posted yet, but we could get a few here across the state of Texas with temperatures like they are. Uh, the forecast calls for temperatures to be uh, into the mid-90s this afternoon. Partly cloudy skies, south, southeast Julie winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. And uh, we do have rain chances next week, which is great news. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Transguide right now. Thank you, Justin, by the way. Uh, looks like that incident is cleared 410 in Jackson Keller. We had a stalled vehicle on the right-hand shoulder. Uh, looks like we actually have a funeral procession there that just moved past the Transguide camera. Well, last week, Governor Greg Abbott signed a handful of bills that passed during this year's busy legislative session, but he also vetoed many of them. So for a look at what didn't make the cut, we bring in our digital journalist, Ferris Sabawi. Good morning, Ferris. And Ferris, what can you tell us about some of the bills that Abbott vetoed this past legislative session? 
Hey, yeah, good morning to y'all. Um, as you know, the legislature passed uh, all, roughly 3,000 bills uh, in that last legislative session. Uh, Abbott vetoed uh, 20 of them, essentially. Uh, and a lot of them have caught over, uh, a lot of attention on Twitter. One of them uh, he vetoed was about a uh, dog chaining bill. And this bill would uh, have reformed some of the laws uh, that animal advocates were calling for to uh, help make it easier to step in when you see a dog harmfully restrained. Uh, Abbott vetoed that bill saying uh, the requirements on it were just too onerous for dog owners and he felt it amounted to micromanaging and over criminalization. He also vetoed a bill that would have required dating uh, violence prevention uh, instructions in school. Um, and he vetoed that one because he felt like parents didn't have the option to opt out of it. And he mm. felt that parents should be given the option to opt out of any instruction they don't think is good for their student. Uh, and another one that really disappointed a lot of criminal justice advocates was a bill he vetoed that would have allowed juvenile offenders to get parole earlier than uh, they currently are allowed to get now. A lot of criminal justice advocates wanted to see that pass through um, just so they could you know, uh, really uh, allow these juveniles who sometimes have matured to get out a little earlier. Um, but unfortunately, Abbott said that it would open uh, a lot of convictions up to a lot of litigation. And so those are some of the bills that he vetoed. Uh, Ferris, one major veto that Abbott made apparently had to do with part of the budget that actually pays the Texas legislature. Why did that happen? Yeah, well, uh, as you guys uh, can remember, at the end of the 87th Texas legislature, the Texas House Democrats walked out uh, of the legislature to uh, really uh, to protest the restrictive voting bill that Abbott wanted to see passed and on his desk. So in response, Abbott decided to do a line item veto uh, on the budget. Uh, that will prohibit lawmakers from getting their pay. Now, our elected officials, they only make about $600 a month from this. Uh, but unfortunately, there are some unintended consequences of that veto. It's actually going to harm a lot of staffers and support agencies uh, in the Texas legislature uh, who are not our elected officials. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. And Ferris, before we go, can the legislature override any of these vetoes at this point? Well, Sarah, because a lot of these vetoes came at the end of the legislative session, uh, there's nothing they can do to override it at this point. There is nothing that stops them from passing similar bills in future legislatures uh, and maybe making the, the tweaks to the language that Abbott asked for. Um, but there's nothing they can do in this legislative session. Now, coming up next for the, the legislature, we definitely have some special sessions. Abbott has already called one for July 8th. So we're just waiting to see exactly what will be on that agenda. All right, Ferris Abawi, thank you so much. And also you can find all this stuff on KSAT.com. Thank you, Ferris. Thank y'all, happy to be here. Just about 940, 81 degrees. You're watching GMSA at nine. Our Katrina Weber joins us for a deeper look into her new series called If These Walls Could Talk. Real quick, we want to go to TransGuy to show you we've got a major accident right now that is definitely affecting traffic. This is I-35 and Division. We've got big backups in the area. We've got hardly any cars moving through that area. Looks like we've got SAPD on the scene right now. We'll try to get you some more information. Traffic is flowing the other direction. But again, 35 Division area, be advised if you are traveling in this area anytime soon. Well, all across the city, no matter what part of town, you can find murals and art on the side of restaurants and buildings. Some can even be seen from along the highway. Indeed, as part of Katrina Weber's newest series, If These Walls Could Talk, she's diving deeper into the story behind the mural. Here's a clip from her latest story. We really didn't get my dad back from Vietnam until 30 years later because he was self-medicating and all that to deal with all the, the post-traumatic stress. He saw and, uh, firsthand so the inner conflicts the war had caused yeah. and how his father ultimately worked through them. In 2006, a group called San Anto Cultural Arts asked Mike to tell that story in a mural. This is me, a hundred pounds ago. <laughs> You can watch that full story right now on KSAT.com. Joining us now to break down the idea behind the series is Katrina Weber and the man behind the camera, photojournalist Timmy Stewart. Or I call him Timmy. <laughs> so good to have you guys in studio. Well, yeah, thank nice. you. I like to come in from time to time just to visit and let nice. you know what's happening out there in the streets. Th thanks for bringing Tim with you. <laughs> Katrina, what is the series all about and how did you come up with this idea? 
Well, obviously, it's about murals throughout the city. Uh, it's called If These Walls Could Talk because we dive into what is behind those murals. Uh, kind of came up with the idea out of curiosity. We would pass one every day, and I, it was a, a picture of a man, and it said, rest in peace in his name. And I kind of wondered, what's that all about? And like I always do, Timmy, what's that about? And he's like, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I got on my Google machine and, and found out. I said, well, this is a great story. And what stories are behind all the rest of the murals? And that's where it took off from there. We talked to management. and. The finished product is what you'll be seeing in the weeks to come. I love that. As a reporter, we always turn to our photographers, you have all the answers. <laughs> and, and, and Timmy, um, so the series is about paintings on a wall. So it seems like it would be challenging to shoot, you know, this one dimensional wall. So how are you able to make that fresh each week? Um, I, I guess experience. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for over 25 years and, and I kind of, I guess it's the pace and the editing, you know, and, and I want to make sure that it's, a, that it's as interesting as it can be because, you know, even though my medium is completely different, I consider myself to be an artist as well. Agreed, agreed. Absolutely. Of course, we remember you guys' last series, While You Were Sleeping. How does this compare? Well, for one, we don't have to get up in the middle of the night. True. So that is a good thing. <laughs> That's nice. It's yeah, a really so good thing. This is, I think that this is, uh, each one of those kind of gave us an insight into worlds that we're not in. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoy this one because there's so much art and thought that goes into this. And just hearing the people's stories is amazing. We have some good ones coming up that we don't want to give away okay. too much. But next week, that's I'm that really so excited about up. next week's. It's, it's going to be fantastic. Give us a, a tiny tease. Okay. It's just well, a tiny one. It has to do with living people, so it's not an RIP mural. Okay. And uh, it's about more than 30 people in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. with so some great stories. And it's interactive, too. Okay. It yeah. must be big. It, it's good. <laughs> you guys okay. are such great storytellers. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank, for Thank you, guys. Thank you for having Trina us. Trina Weber, Tim Stewart from uh, GMSA and uh, our other newscast. Thanks, guys. And if these walls could talk stories, they air on GMSA Early Edition on Wednesday. So tune in next week for that story Katrina was just talking about. You can also catch up on the first two stories on our website right now, ksat.com. Well, Justin is back, 82 degrees out at San Antonio International Airport at last check, and it looks like we're about to check on what's happening down at the coast. Yeah, if you're heading to the coast this weekend, weather looks pretty good. We're going to see some warm weather down there, too, obviously, maybe a couple of showers uh, and temperatures in the low 90s. Heat index values will be up in the triple digits down there, too, so just be aware. Water temperatures at 86, that's nice. Uh, wave height about three feet, so not a big deal. Should be a good weekend for... Port A Rockport, although I'll tell you there could be a shower storm, especially on Sunday. So just keep that in mind. Uh, heat index forecast for here in San Antonio going forward. It gets better. I promise you we're going to see that heat index around 103, 105 today. But as we get into the next couple of days, we'll start to see this slowly come down, due in large part to some lower temperatures as we get into Sunday and Monday. Humidity will probably still be there. But uh, thankfully, temperatures come down a bit and it won't feel as bad outside. Right now, we've got mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures at 82 degrees at the airport, 82 Kelly, 82 Randolph, and a southerly breeze for most of us. Satellite picture shows we've got some passing clouds, but the sun is out uh, across most of San Antonio. 79 Bernie Stage, you're at 82 in New Braunfels, 80 in Seguin, 81 down there in Carrizo Springs. And we are detecting a few showers down there around, around Victoria. I'll show you that in just a second. But Dew points are high, mid 70s, close to 80, which is just incredibly muggy. These numbers, it feels like for the past three weeks, have just not dropped much at all. Here we are again dealing with these extreme heat indices. 103 here in San Antonio, 107 is what it will feel like this afternoon in Bevo, 107 in Gonzales, 106 Pleasanton. And this is borderline advisory, but either way, just know that, uh, yes, there will uh, be some high heat indices this afternoon. We are noticing a few showers along the coast. Even though we have our ridge of high pressure here, there are a few showers showing up around Victoria. Those probably won't make it much further inland, but we can't rule out a stray shower today, uh, even though, again, we are underneath our ridge of high pressure. And this is actually going to start to move as uh, we get into Friday and then more so Saturday, Sunday. It moves off to the east. We get another big ridge developing out west. It's sort of unusual. The ridge builds pretty far north. Places like Seattle could get temperatures in the triple digits there. Places like Portland, too. So this is sort of an interesting pattern, I'd say. 
and we get a trough across the middle part of the country, and that makes for some unsettled weather. Weak frontal boundary tries to make it into North Texas. We get some moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. All these things combined means some decent rain chances. Monday, about a 30% chance, and we've increased it to about a 40% chance Tuesday into Wednesday as this pattern hangs around. 96 tomorrow, 95 Saturday, 93 Sunday, 20% chance of rain, I'd say mainly along the coast, and then a 30% chance Monday, 40% chance Tuesday, Wednesday, and even down the line, Thursday, Friday next week, still looks like we'll have some rain chances around. So an encouraging weather pattern for late June, early July, guys. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. About 10 till right now, 82 degrees. Well, an Austin beekeeper is causing national buzz. We'll tell you why the social media star is deleting her accounts altogether. Today at noon, the pandemic shut a lot of doors to businesses and organizations, but for one local nonprofit, it has opened a whole new world of opportunity. Fiesta Youth has served as a safe space for the local LGBTQ plus community. Now it's reaching children as far as Tokyo and London. Ivan Hadetta tells us how they made the best out of the pandemic today on the news at noon. We need to update you on a couple of traffic situations and it's a mess out there right now, especially I-35 South near division. Look at that traffic backed up. We have a major accident. It looks like they are clearing it as quickly as possible, but the log jam is going to take a while to clear. We looks like we still have police and possibly wreckers on the scene. A few cars are sneaking through, but look at that traffic working its way from it looks like the 410 area to 35. Uh, we have a stalled vehicle or a police unit at 281 at Bassey. That appears to be in the southbound lanes or sorry, northbound lanes of 281 at Bassey. And then I think we have another shot here. We do have a stalled vehicle 410 Harry Wurzbach. This is on the left shoulder. I don't have a direction for you on that one. Justin. Thanks, sir. Hot and humid today, 95 degrees. It will feel like anywhere from 103 to 105 this afternoon. Hot temperatures next few days. Pattern change by Sunday, rain chances next week. We have a, an interesting story that's been trending on KSAT.com. It's a little confusing, so bear with us. Yeah, so if you've seen the TikTok, her name is Texas Bee Works, and she's known for scooping out the bees with her bare hands and not really wearing a lot of protective equipment because she says she feels comfortable doing so. Yeah, this bee drama has been unfolding over TikTok, and it's now come to an end. So another user named LA Honey Bee Works set the stage when they called out Austin beekeeper Erica Thompson of Texas Bee Works on TikTok after her bee removal videos went viral. Erica has over 6 million followers on TikTok and has been dubbed the bee lady. So safety issues were the biggest concern raised by LA Honey Bee Works and other beekeepers because Thompson famously doesn't wear any protective equipment as she scoops swarms of bees with her bare hands and talks to them in a very soothing soft voice. LA Honey Bee Works complained of Thompson wearing her hair loose with dark colors and no gear after receiving backlash, more backlash than support. LA Honey Bee Works announced in a video that she'd be deleting her account and that her business is now closed and defunct. So this is the critic of the beekeeper yeah. in these viral videos. Yes, the Austin beekeeper is not deleting her account. The critic is, uh, you know, and LA, LA Honey Bee Works says no hate to Texas Bee Works. I mean, it's just a lot of bee, bee drama. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful out there, folks.